function theory, they're supposed to be independent of one another. Now, I can go more detail to have you more sort of nuts. It depends on what you, and you kind of don't really look into this. If, I mean, is there a way that these alarm clocks can really be um, screwed up in some sense that they both fail? The answer is yes. If they're on the circuit breaker, no, then, but that's not what we want to focus on. Just, we don't want to go into that detail of being the same circuit breaker and yada yada. It's more, it, you know, assume they're on circuit breakers so that they independently of other. Another way to think that and look at that is simply that, you guys know the Christmas tree lights? It's analogous to that whole series in parallel. What about Christmas trees? Anybody spend an extra dollar and buy the other lights that are wired in parallel and not series, like me? No? Do you guys always get, you guys celebrate Christmas? No? You just open presents. Anybody even get presents? Okay, you have a Christmas tree? Who decorates it? Oh. Do you ever notice that you get your light out and they don't work? You want to know why they don't work? If they're wired, if they're wired in C's, at least one of the bulbs is bad. If you buy the other bulbs, the ones that are wired in what? Parallel. What does that mean? Exactly. One of the bulbs is bad which means um, it'll be off, but the other bulbs will still be on. So what's happening there is each bulb is independent of one another. The likelihood of one of them being bad doesn't change the likelihood of the other being bad. Um, in a serious situation, if one's bad, they all go out. Isn't that right, Eddie? And that's really what the analogy is as well. You know, there's a lot of different analogies to it. I mean, that's an important fact. Being independent is very important. Did I tell you that story about my brother? I didn't tell you my brother's story. You guys know when you roll a die, the likelihood of you selecting a five is no different than the likelihood of you selecting a six. Is that true? Right? But then what happens if you're rolling a die? And you guys notice that, you know what? I rolled a die, and that six showed up about five times in a row. Can that happen? Yes. Let's ask you a question. You know it showed up five times, and then you say, well, you know what's going to happen? That since each one of these is equally likely, picking one or two, three or four or six, probably all of those is one over six, then some people start to get nuts and they go, you know what? This number has been showing up much more often than it should. So I'm going to bet that next row, it's not going to be what? A six. It's going to be something else. So I have that strategy. And so my younger brother, he's a smart guy. Okay? He has a master's degree in mechanical engineering. Worked for GPL. He used to go fly around from Spain, Australia, to here in Southern California work on the dishes. You know, those, the, these, these dishes that are out, whatever they are. So he's not a dumb guy. But you know what he told me? He started saying that, you know, you're going to start to bet on other numbers. And what did I tell him as the older brother? What did I have to tell him? As the older brother, I had to tell him he was wrong. You think he likes being wrong? No, especially if he bosses all these people around about those dishes. He doesn't want to be wrong. I told him, you're wrong. You guys want to know why he's wrong? Why is he wrong? Because that die doesn't remember what it was. The past has no effect on the what? On the future. Meaning, if he rolls again, the die doesn't go, you know what, I was a stick five times in a row. I think I'll be a two now. It doesn't work that way. The dice has no memory. The likelihood of die being a six again or a five or four is the same. And this is this concept of being independent and dependent. That the result of the past does not change the likelihood of the what? Future. That is a very powerful, you know, you guys sit there and you talk about, oh, math, how ugly, how horrible, I hate it. You're computing all these values. But what you don't realize maybe is that underneath all that computi uh, computation has a lot of meaning. This is the meaning of it. You know, the deep meaning is that does this past really affect the future? Some people say what? Yes, some people say no. We can actually probably compute that in certain environments. And we deal with that in dealing with it in this environment right here. Isn't that interesting? You know, there's websites out for lottery numbers. 
where people go and they select lottery numbers. They've labeled some lottery numbers what they call hot numbers. They go, ah, you know what? Another 14 showed up about 500 times already. That's a hot number, they call them. And what do they do? They want to sell you the hot numbers. And when people buy it, yeah, they do. They're going to go buy some hot numbers. They're going to go, oh, we're going to pay for that knowledge. You know, people keep track of it and they sell this. And then some people come along and say, no, wait a minute. Don't buy the hot numbers. Buy the what? The code numbers. Why does he buy the code numbers? Because they're thinking now, they're gonna, they think they're being smart about it. They're going, you know what? We know that, yeah, the 14 has showed up the most. It's, we feel that, you know what? Now the number 15 maybe didn't show up a lot, 16 or whatever. That's going to have to show eventually. So use the code numbers instead. But exactly, Gibby, what's the story? You guys ever watch those, the, how the numbers come down? Right? The balls are flinging in the air, and then what? They come down, and then what? It's a 14, or it's a 12, or it's a 72. If they do that whole process again, and the numbers come down, do you guys realize that th that ball didn't remember what it was? You see what I'm saying? It doesn't, it starts all over again. So there's no such thing as hot numbers, cold numbers. The past in that setting does not affect the future because the out these events are independent of one another. Okay? In this scenario, though, it does. Because the moment you throw people out, that affects the likelihood of that event happening. It's a different probability. Tell me, 104 over 245 is some numerical value. 103 over 244 is a different numerical value. It's a different value, meaning throwing somebody who voted no out the window or throwing a gay out the window changes the likelihood of the next select being what you're asking. I think me and Gabby are the only one who are paying attention, right? Should we give them a quiz now? Should you quiz them? <laughs> Let's quiz them. Gabby gets all the points right because she knows. Should we give her the quiz, Gabby? No. Huh? You guys okay with what I said? Does that make any sense? This definition I gave you is a very full definition. In fact, I think um, what happened is I was reading last night, sorry, I was reading last night about a mathematician who, uh, I don't understand the, the question really, I think I know what it is, but there's a mathematician that, there's some theory in math that says, you know what, there's a certain set of instructions. Regardless of where anyone starts, they will find they're located to a proper, you know, ending, ending point. There's a whole math behind this, evidently. I know very little about it, in fact, not about it. I was just reading the article in, on MSN last night, which is that here's a 65-year-old mathematician immigrated from Russia to, to Israel, was able to prove that result. Meaning, regardless of where you start, a certain set of instructions, you'll be able to end up at this location. Now, that has a lot of uh, meaning. Um, computer scientists are really interested in it, because what that means is, regardless of where you start here, OK? It could give you instructions about how to get to somewhere, and you'll always end up in that location. Isn't that interesting and fascinating? No? You ever do sort of a map quest? Right? You imagine that? If you want everybody to end up at the, some location, there's certain conditions in which you can start to give instructions, and it doesn't matter where they start, they'll all end up at the same endpoint. Has a lot of powerful um, you know, applications. So this Russian mathematician.